Hi, in the first video about the Agent-to-Agent -Agent protocol, or A2A for short, we learned what it is. A standard language that allows different AI agents to communicate with each other for both simple and complex tasks. That was the what. Today we are focusing on the how. So if you want to build an AI agent in Python, which library should you choose? There are several options available, each with a very different philosophy. Today we will take a close look at three of them. The official A2A SDK, the modern framework Fast A2A, and the simple looking Python A2A library. By the end, you will know exactly which one fits your project, not just on the surface, but as always on this channel with a deeper look at architecture, scalability, and maintainability. First, the official A2A SDK. According to the description, it's a Python library that helps run agentic applications as A2A servers following the agent-to-agent -agent protocol. Quite straightforward. And that is exactly what it delivers. Strict standards and low-level building blocks. Next, we have Fast A2A, a newer library officially extracted from Pydentic AI. So it describes itself as a framework agnostic implementation of the A2A protocol in Python. For me, a very promising library since the Pydentic team and the library that they built is one of the best and most influential packages in Python. And finally, we've got Python A2A. On paper, it makes the biggest claim. Comprehensive, production ready with full MCP support. Sounds very impressive, but let's see how that holds up in practice. Let's jump into the code and the development experience. We will first start with Python A2A. So the example is extremely simple. We've got one class, two decorators, and it feels pleasantly high level, almost too good to be true. But when I took a closer look at the code, I saw that it's tightly coupled, it's very monolithic, and the worst part is here. Normally, modern web frameworks like FastAPI work async and manage one event loop. But in the Python A2A package, there are places where a new thread is created per request and inside a brand new async IO event loop is spun up. So something like this. It's a little bit simplified, but this is the way it's implemented. But why is this a problem? So the first one is scalability. So spawning a new thread and loop per request quickly leads to a thread explosion. So when you put a little bit of a load on that server, it will probably fail. In Python A2A, you're also forced to work with Flask, but not the async one, the synchronous one, and you cannot switch to Starlet or Fast API because Fast API manages one event loop. And if you add more per request, this undermines the concurrency model and leads to instability. So in my opinion, in 2025, this is something that never ever should be implemented like this. So in short, this library scales poorly and isn't suited for real workloads. The production ready label doesn't hold up. I would not recommend using it. Okay, now we go to the other end of the spectrum, the A2A SDK. You get a low level building block like request context and event queue, and you build the rest yourself. That means event routing and state management, background task lifecycle, so like start, monitor or cancel, persistence, storage integration, retry, back off, rate limiting, authentication or with authorization, observability and deployment. Everything is done by yourself. You only get the very low building blocks. The pros for this library are the same like for every low level library. You get full control and perfect spec compliance, but the cons are also the same. So you get higher initial effort and more architectural responsibility. So for experienced teams with an existing platform stack, this is often the cleanest approach, but for getting it up quickly, not so much. But for these ideas, we may use fast A2A and its architecture. So have a look at the fast A2A architecture diagram. At the top is the HTTP server, which is Starlet, that handles incoming requests. Each request go to the task manager, the coordinator. The task manager decides what to do and sends it to the broker. The broker is the scheduler and the queue manager. In memory for quick starts, later you can replace it with like Redis or RabbitMQ without touching your business logic. The business logic is in the worker. So when a task is ready, it goes to the worker and there is where the actual logic lives. The task manager also talks to the storage class, which persists the status, the logs and the metadata. So this clear separation between task manager, broker, worker and storage makes the system testable, modular and scalable. I think the architecture is very, very good. But despite the great architecture, we also have some reasons against fast A2A. The biggest one is that some features are still missing and you can tell that the project isn't a top priority right now. So pull requests are open for over a month and nobody reviews it. 
we also only got two contributors. So that's something to factor into a decision. So how do they stack up against each other? With Python A2A, the API is convenient, but the thread and loop architecture is not production grade. So fine for learning, but not for any serious workload. Fast A2A gives you a modern, clean architecture out of the box. HTTP, task manager, storage and broker, worker, with swappable components and a very nice and developer-friendly experience. The downside is the current low project activity. You may have to fill in missing pieces yourself. So if you don't want to choose one, there is also a hybrid strategy. You use the types and the contractual clarity from the A2A SDK, but borrow the layer separation and orchestration ideas from fast A2A. So this way you combine stability and a clean architecture. So what do you think? Which strategy would you choose? Let me know that in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, then hit the like button and subscribe for more deep dives into A2A. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.